in 21st century, one of the best way to manipulate and change DNA is CRISPR-Cas9. And this is really revolutionized molecular biology itself. In this video, we'll look at a little bit about the use of the CRISPR and how CRISPR can be achieved in the laboratory. So CRISPR-Cas9 systems can be used to generate knock-in, point mutations, and knockout lines. So all sort of genetic manipulation at DNA level is possible using CRISPR. Not only DNA, CRISPR has a brilliant way of targeting a genomic locus. So a particular genomic loci can be highlighted and can be imaged using CRISPR mediated fish. If you add a fluorophore with the Cas9 enzyme and allow the guide RNA to target a particular genomic loci, so the genomic loci would be highlighted and that too in a very specific manner. Then at RNA level or at RNA production level, you can also control. You can perform transcriptional activation and transcriptional repression paradigm using CRISPR. So in this paradigm, you use the guide RNA to target this machinery and this particular Cas9, instead of cleaving, just stay there near the promoter. Now, depending upon which sequences they are binding, they either allow or facilitate the binding of the RNA polymerase or they might hinder the binding of RNA polymerase. As a result, transcriptional activation or repression could be achieved. Not only that, the futuristic gene therapy could be designed or the custom-built medicines could be designed using this CRISPR strategy. Yet we are far away from it, but it's not so far. There are possibilities. Now let's talk about that how CRISPR can be achieved using cell culture method or how it is performed in the laboratory, how the scientist can perform it in the lab. So it is possible now to manipulate human cells, human stem cells using CRISPR-Cas9 technology. In this video, we are going to look at that. So stay tuned till the end of this video. Exactly, it would give you a flavor how things are done in the lab. So here are some cells, which are human embryonic stem cell lines in a plate. Now what we are going to perform is to perform several gen genetic manipulations in these stem cells. Definitely, the gene that we want to manipulate, we are going to use a guide RNA against it and the CRISPR machinery would cut it. And inside the cell, there would be repair machinery such as NHEJ or homologous directed re repair mechani mechanism. And when this re repair mechanism would happen, we would incorporate our changes. So in order to perform that, we have to add a mixture of the cells, several plasmids, about which I'm going to talk about, and a plasmid which would help you to screen. In this case, it's a transient GFP expression plasmid. It would only tell you that your transfection reaction has worked properly. The next step would be electroporation. So electroporation is one of the efficient way of transferring gene inside the cells. Using electric current, you form small pores on the cell, and the DNA, that means in this case the plasmids, would get inside the cell. After that, you take the transfected cells or electroporated cells and you plate them on a fresh plate and allow them to grow for a little while. Now, since we have a expression plasmid for GFP, so the transfected colonies would be highlighted in green if you see under a microscope. Now, there is a chance that the colonies which would be green or which would be GFP positive, they also have other plasmids which is required for the CRISPR. So most probably some of these colonies would be positive for this genetic manipulation. So in the next step would be sorting out all the GFP positive cells from these transfected cell pool. After the fact sorting, when you really sort GFP positive cells and collect them separately, you put those GFP positive cells in a new plate and allow the cells to grow for a while. After the cells grow, you would see in the plate there are colonies. 
and these colonies are achieved from one single cell which was GFP positive that means which was transfected at least we know the transfection has worked on those cells but we yet don't know all the plasmids are present in all of these colonies or not in one colony it is possible that all the three plasmids are present in one colony it is also possible let's say two plasmids are present the third one is not there so what we really don't know in which colonies all of the plasmids are present and all the genetic manipulation has taken place so what we have to do under the microscope we have to put collagenase and take out all of these colonies and distribute these single colonies into 96 well plates or a 24 well plate in each well you put one colony and this one colony is derived from one single clone from this you do something which is very similar to replica plating when this plate is confluent you split them into two different plates such that one plate is exact replica of the other from the material present in one plate you extract the dna and use pcr based screening or sequencing based screening and let's say after screening you figure out that these three wells are actually positive for whatever you want whatever genetic manipulation you wanted to do so you track back to the root plate and take out the cells from those plates and expand them and keep them for future uses. And these, this is your cell line. You revalidate with sequencing as well. So let's look at what are the plasmids. Here, the plasmids are depending upon what type of manipulation we are doing. In the first case that I'm going to share with you, we're going to do a knock in experiment that means we are adding some component inside the ge genomic dna which was not present many of the cases scientists attach a gfp or a fluorophore coding gene to mark many proteins endogenously in this case the donor plasmid has that sequence the another plasmid has the sequence for cas9 and also had the guide rna which is shown here in the black the third plasmid is a transient GFP expressing plasmid which would tell us the transfection has worked or not. So the guide RNA would target the Cas9 system to a particular genomic locus which it should be targeted and then the donor plasmid have sequence homology with the strand which is targeted and based on homology it would be actually incorporated in the place of the uh, uh, double strand break and a homology dependent repair would take place using this strand the the donor stand strand as a template as a result the donor strand should be incorporated into the genome and using specific pcr primers you can amplify the particular region because you know this particular gfp containing region is not present in this cell in the cells normally right so the wild type would not show this band but a ba the but the mutant or the knocking line would show a band which would amplify a portion of the gfp and the portion of the normal genomic dna so using that screening method you can have a rough idea which cells cell lines are positive then definitely you would send it for sequencing to understand the incorporation of the sequence later on you can also use the same principle to target the guide rna and instead of having a donor plasmid, you put a repair oligo. And this repair oligo is basically having a point mutation inside of it. Now, when this repair oligo is replacing in the double strand break, it incorporates that mutation inside the genome. And you have several ways to understand it. Many of the cases, a new restriction site would appear there which was not previously there so you can cut it with a different restriction enzyme it would give you a particular restriction bands but the ultimate way to understand the point mutation is to perform sequencing that would tell you exactly the sequence change has happened or not though CRISPR looks highly precise high throughput but you need to screen as many as hundreds of colonies to get specific mutants so this is also a tedious process as well in the laboratory but this process has a lot of promise and it is really really targeted so with that i would say goodbye
And if you like this video, give it a quick thumbs up. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Thank you.